Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Wa atiullah, atiya Rasulu ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajeezu, da'ifu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahalim. But for the grace of Allah that He keeps us in existence and for us to understand about insana kamil and understanding of where we are in this universe. We talked today at lunch with the gentleman for Jummah and it's important to remind myself, we don't know who we are, where we are relative to Allah's creation. So in Western culture there's a Dr. Zeus, Zeus and it's who knows who? Who hears a who? Who hears a who <laughs> uh. And Allah marketing through every medium and the understanding of that creature picks up a flower and hears a voice. Then it goes to show inside the flower there's an entire creation. All these little creatures who's? They're called who? And they live a world thinking that's it. That world of theirs is everything. And Allah shows for us the believer that, I show you my signs on the horizon then upon yourself. But inside yourself is a little bit more difficult when somebody's not taking a way of tafakkur. So upon the horizon all these different medias come to teach us. So when you're watching something like that, that this creature picks up a flower, hears a sound and inside the flower there's an entire community. And they think they're it, that that's it, that's the whole world, that's all existence. And the whole cartoon goes about them finding out there's something much larger than themselves. This in the way of marifa, if they don't take the ascension, if they don't take a life in which to ascend and take to the heights of reality. As soon as they take a path of ascension they are in the school of Rijalullah. And when Allah begin to train the Rijal that, don't look at this world from the mulk and your physicality, physical to physical because I look at you, I see you and all we understand from each other is the perspective of this creation. You don't know how big you are and how small you are compared to Allah's creation. The way of tafakkur and contemplation they begin to move from their physicality that Allah opened khashf and understanding from their soul that your reality is much larger than you understand. And that the reality is immense and your bara epsilon, a non-existent dot. So we said when you go into the plane on the ground we think we're all the same. As soon as we go in the air you see that everything shrinks. My home is not visible at 30,000 feet, my street, my community, nothing. And Allah says, as you approach my reality Everything you know became nothing, don't think it's something. So ascension towards a reality is to leave to the greater eye, the greater vision of Allah's creation, not looking from the physicality and then basing all your life on physicality, basing all your hopes and desires based on physicality. So when Allah came into our lives and began to teach that you may just be your entire universe like a cell within the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah Because nothing is in La ilaha illallah, the kalima itself clarifies, La ilaha illallah, there's nothing here 
But Allah is as a might. So where are you? Our existence is in an ocean of light called Muhammadun Rasulullah When you understand where you came from, then you begin to understand where you're going back. Because from where you came will be back your return. You came from this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah and to it you shall return. As a result this aqeedah of ours became very clear. All the complicated Arabic words they're not needed. Where did you come from? I came from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad How am I going to reach now to the highest portion of that light? Araf, the heights. Where is the highest point of this light? The qalb. Qalb. Why the qalb? Because Allah I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my believer. Means my izza and my might is emanating in the heart of this reality and by my izza and might it exists. So Allah cannot be found in creation but Allah is a might and the signs of Allah So means the Muhammadun Rasulullah is that reality, Allah is its power. Giving it its right to exist, its ability to exist. Then the heart of that reality we call Manzil Qur'an, the house in which Holy Qur'an is continuously flowing, it's not a book of past, it's Allah's uncreated speech. The source of all living and death, source of every manifestation is in the speech of Allah that is coming from the heart of Prophet So they come to teach us the qalb. When we say qalb, that's what qalb means. Not only the beating flesh of your physicality, but where this power and this qudra is emanating, they want to get to this qaf. They want to get to where this qudra and this power is coming from. So the believer's miraj is where? is in Muhammadun Rasulullah When they finally one day wake up and understand your light is within the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah If not where would your light be? If you think it's with Allah you have made a shirk. Because Allah says, nothing is like me, la shariq, how could you? Compare yourself to be in the space of Allah the Creator. So their miraj is on how to take their light to the center of power. This is your qidah. The whole reason for your existence and your belief is that how am I going to take my light? Very simple that my children can understand this. How am I going to take my light to the center of power? which is the qalb. So then how? By love and muhabbat. How do you enter anyone's heart? With your aqal? With your amal? No, not at all. But if you want to enter into the heart of this reality known as Muhammadun Rasulullah it's ishq and muhabbat. This now answers all of your fiqh questions. Because they say, oh the Sufi they don't follow sharia because whoever said that has no head. 
we just explained if I want to enter into the heart I want the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Can you get the love of Prophet without sharia, without following the Divine laws that Prophet brought? No, as a matter of fact you'd be insulting Prophet said, I lived and I died to bring these rules. My family and my companions they lived and they died to bring these rules. Don't mock my rules, don't mock these laws that I brought. So they hold them to the highest esteem that they can. Where they fall short and in their inability they ask Prophet for forgiveness. But love is what makes them to do their amal. So they're teaching when, when the servant truly understands where they came from, that they're swimming in this ocean of reality, only through love will you complete your task. If I tell you all day long and beat you to pray, you're just going to resent me because you're just waiting for the beating to stop, the antagonizing, the aggravating, the continuous pray, 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 pray. Doesn't mean anything. But when you love Prophet and the love is emanating from your heart, you feel ashamed not to pray that the love and the bond won't grow if I don't do what he asked from me And every time I want to come and do something that may be against the sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad I would feel ashamed because my relationship is based on love and respect, not fear and punishment. Fear and punishment is a completely different ocean. Muhabbat and love is the most powerful ocean because as soon as you love, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad will draw you like a magnet right into his presence. And that's why the holy hadith that you will be with whom you love. As soon as we do these acts of love, come for Milad al Nabi come for Mawlid, come for zikr, come for good character and teachings of akhlaq, carry the holy sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad You go to a majlis they say, Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama Zindabad and they have no turban. So what part of the sunnah that you are Zindabad? No hat on their head, no beard on their face, they look like women. What part of your Ahlul Sunnah was that? They do what they do for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad We want to look like the image of Sayyidina Muhammad from what they see in their heart. That which you love and you imitate what you love and you begin to look like who you love. And you begin to act with who you love, whatever they did you try your best to do. Then Hadith Al-Qudsi comes that you did your obligations, you're doing these actions out of love, I become the eyes in which you see, the ears in which you hear, the hands in which you touch, the breath in which you breathe, the feet in which you move. So much so you become Rabbaniyoon and you have power of kun fayakun. Can you imagine walking with Sayyidina Muhammad in your every action, trying your best to keep that way, trying your best to propagate that love, trying your best to hold that example to the best of your ability. You don't think that the reality of Prophet is walking with you, dressing you, blessing you. Shahidan, Allah describes Prophet Shahidan, of course he's witness to everything you're doing. Mubashiran that he's sending you all these beatific lights when he's watching you Happy and ridha this is, this is the immense love story. This love of Sayyidina Muhammad Every time they try to do something good to make Prophet happy with them so that they can be dressed by that fire, dressed by that light. So that the mubashir, the lights begin to dress upon them and nadiran by virtue of these lights coming to them it corrects all their badness.
Because when you send the ocean of truth towards you, it obliterates every falsehood and pushes it away. So then the aqidah became very simple, make the way of love, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad That love will build our bond, that love will make us to do every action that is correct to the best of our abilities. When you feel that love, by love you do what you have to do because you feel ashamed to let that person that you love down. And that's the strongest bond. Not fear and punishment that you run and hide and think that this you're not going to be punished this day, maybe next day you'll be punished. No but through love I feel ashamed that he's watching and I'm doing wrong and my soul is from the ocean of Sayyidina Muhammad Please Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem take away my hypocrisy. Take away this nifaq and these bad characteristics that I know they're distancing me from you and their intimate dialogue and relationship begins to open. And then everything becomes clear for them. So whatever we are doing is doing to increase the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Support the majlis, support the Mawlid the Nabi Now opening upon us next week is the month of Safar. We said to live a life, Ya Rabbi give me ease through this difficulty. Keep me alive for the sake of Mawlid the Nabi that I can raise the honourable status, propagate the reality of that status Ya Rabbi. And if you don't need me it's time for me to go. But I have no other purpose to be on this earth, not to eat and drink and be like cattle going to the bathroom. Raise me from the status of your animal kingdom to your heavenly kingdom in which I have a purpose to be upon this earth. Not amassing funds, not just eating, drinking and, and using facilities but give me a purpose. And awliyaullah came said, the best and highest purpose is this love of Sayyidina Muhammad Make your life about the tashrif, that make your mawlid in these salawats and not say, make your mawlid in a grand way. If they close the hole for us, we will do the mawlid on the street. I'll bring food trucks to feed a thousand and two thousand people and say, we're going to protest Muslim rights matter because they don't like happy celebrations. And they said, no, if you're coming to worship God this is not allowed. And they said, no, we're coming to protest, we want to protest. So, okay that's allowed, please, <laughs> okay, we're coming to protest yeah. and we're going to sing the whole time and we're going to bring food. This is how we protest, means no matter what we're not going to stop. No matter what our life is, it is to live this existence to get the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad That is our aqidah, it is the most perfected aqidah of love that answers all our questions, can I do this or can I do that? Can I do this? Is this halal or is this haram? Do you see how this will be common sense? If you love Sayyidina Muhammad you're trying on a mirage to get into the heart and to the soul of Prophet can you ask if it's halal and haram to harm yourself? Is it okay if I ingest this and I harm myself? Is it okay if I smoke this and hallucinate? Is it okay if I drink this and hallucinate? With everything that we just spoke all your questions should be answered. If it's the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that you want. Ask yourself that question first, is what I'm about to do or am I doing in my life Prophet I'm going to be happy with me, cheating, stealing, thieving from people? It corrects the character, it corrects the complete character of the person if they're sincere. If they truly are searching for the reality of the love and the attention and the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad that understanding itself will begin to answer every question. 
and every deficiency that they're not doing, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem pray for me that Allah give me more himmah so I can complete the prayers I have to complete, to do the zikrs I have to do, to do the good actions I have to do and to abstain from everything that is not like by Allah and your beautific eyes. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.